Hi, I'm Carly McCarty, host of The Dining Diva, where we take you to the finest local dining establishments. Today, we're going to be with Abby Turner at the Farm Girls Pub and Grub and Lucky Penny Creamery. I'm back now with the Dining Diva. Joining us now is Abby Turner, owner of the Penny Creamery in Kent, Ohio. And also, I'm excited about the restaurant Farm Girls in Alliance. Welcome, Abby. Thanks for coming today. I appreciate Tell it. Tell me about the creamery. I'm so excited about Good. this. Uh, this is Lucky Penny Creamery, and we are a value-added uh, production facility for both cow, goat, and sheep milk um, from Ohio farmers. Um, it's an adaptive reuse of an old building, which we turned into a state-licensed dairy plant in 2010. So you do process both dairy cheese, goat, and sheep cheeses That's here. correct. We do cow, goat, and sheep. And they're all locally sourced. That's correct. Seven farms we work with it, uh, throughout Ohio. And I'm assuming that these are animals not treated with antibiotics, growth hormones. That's correct. Everything, every batch of milk that we do bring into the creamery is tested for antibiotics, bacteria, somatic cell count, and the components of the milk. As cheesemakers, it's very, very important that we understand the raw materials that we're dealing with to get the, the, the best expression of that gorgeous um, grass-fed milk out in all of the cheeses we make. And as consumers, I'm so excited because it does, it enhances the flavor when you're eating the freshest milk, again, locally sourced, right. without all those added chemicals. Right. Our cheeses are made with four ingredients, and that's milk, salt, culture, and rennet, and nothing else. Um, it's fresh. They're always, uh, they're always delivered to you within days of coming out of the animal. As fast as we process it, um, it goes to the restaurants or to the farmer's markets. So walk me through the step. Okay. The farmer brings you the milk and some of the cans that we saw out there. What happens next? That's correct. So actually, we go pick up the milk from our farmers. Okay. Um, many of our farmers are Amish farms, so it's actually easier if we go and we act as the hauler. So we go and we pick up the milk in cans, and uh, we bring it back to the creamery where we pasteurize it and then uh, culture it. And then, depending upon the recipe, we'll let it drain for a day or we'll press it and, um, and then package it. And then it goes to distribution. We do work with um, a variety of Ohio distributors in Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton. Uh, Premier Produce is our primary distributor. And we uh, work with them to make sure that they are taking it out to the 80 restaurants that we serve in Ohio. So a lot of our customers are going to want to try some of these delicious cheeses. How do they go about obtaining some? Well, the easiest way is to come down to Farm Girls, okay. um, our uh, micro restaurant down in Alliance. We're open Friday and Saturday from five to nine. And we have a beautiful cheese board there. It's called the Born to Snack. And on it, we have a variety of local cheeses and pickled vegetables, um, some cured meats and uh, any other chef's choice items. But we're going to be down there later. I yeah, can't wait. Right. I've been we'll waiting for that one. We'll get you a Born to Snack <laughs> tonight. So, but that's the quickest and easiest way. But okay. we do have an online shop um, at, uh, at the Lucky Penny Farm website. And too. we have that link on the Dining Diva Facebook page. And I've been so excited, I already put that link up there, but Good. I'm going to repost it again. So if you're interested in either purchasing some of the cheeses or uh, attending the Farm Girls restaurant Friday and Saturday, five to nine o'clock, yep. mm -hmm. I'll put those links up on the Dining Diva webpage as well. Mm -hmm. Tell me the different flavors, what in different textures between a cow's milk cheese, a goat's milk cheese, and sheep's milk cheese. Um, each different animal brings different uh, protein and fat and vitamins, um, actually, to different cheese making. So uh, sheep milk is the premier. It's, it's the highest in fat, it's the highest in protein, it's the highest in vitamins. Um, our sheep milk cheeses are, are just luscious with a nice creamy milk, uh, creamy mouthfeel. We uh, make a sheep milk feta, and um, that is only in season, March 1st, October 1st, because that's when the sheep are milking. And uh, we do other cheeses in goat, which uh, the benefits of goat milk are it's lower in lactose. Um, so for some folks that are lactose intolerant, it actually can a little bit be easier on their digestive systems. Um, cow milk cheeses are wonderful, and we have a fantastic dairy culture here in Ohio. Um, we have a lot of cows, a lot of great land, um, clean water, and it's a wonderful place for dairy. Um, a great dairy culture in Ohio. So we make cow cheeses as well, too. 
I'm so excited. I can't wait to try some of these cheeses. I lived in Europe for a short time, and one of my favorite treats was just to, you know, a meal for me would be eating cheeses. And again, I'm so, we're so me fortunate <laughs> here in, you know, Stark County, Northeastern Ohio to have these farms and people yes. dedicated like you, who's really made this a life passion to provide these cheeses for Northeastern Ohio. Good. Well, you have won a whole bunch of awards and are involved in different programs supporting especially female entrepreneurs. Can you tell me a little bit about the different things that you're involved in sure, professionally? I'd, I'd be delighted to. Yes, we have been lucky. Um, the farms that we work with are producing the highest quality milk, which allows me to produce the highest quality cheeses. So we've been lucky that we have been recognized um, by chefs and associations nationally. Uh, but this is, this space is dedicated to actually rising up other female entrepreneurs. So uh, at Lucky Penny Creamery in Kent, we actually work with um, three different companies, uh, women-owned companies that are starting value-added dairy, agricultural products, um, a cream cheese cow company. We have another goat cheese. You met Gwen, who's a fantastic cheese maker. She's specializing in aged cheeses. And we're doing a shared use of this facility which was an adaptive reuse of an urban property that was blighted. There was gang graffiti on the outside of the building when we bought it. Well, now it's a functioning dairy plant that has been benefiting three small companies. And, and the community. And the community, that's right. And we're very, very happy about that. You know, we are trying to, um, to give back to our community through urban economic development um, in our work here at Lucky Penny Creamery and in our work at Farm Girls and Alliance. And we all get to be the beneficiary of all your hard work because it's delicious. And again, I feel so privileged that your restaurant, the creamery are here and I get to continue to eat good food, really good food. And I'm privileged to be able to work with the wonderful farmers that we do and the great, you know, the great ladies that are here that are, that are working very hard to, you know, continue spurring on the economy using dairy as the mechanism. So farmers are so important and I hope that you will support your local farmers and I'm glad to see that you are supporting the local farmers here in northeastern Ohio. I, I often ask folks, I said, you know, do you have an intimate relationship with agriculture? They say, well, no, really, I don't anymore. My grandparents raised a, raised a farm and had a farm. And I say, well, did you eat today? And if you ate today, you need to thank a farmer. Absolutely. And we need to continue that farm to table mentality in our cuisine where we're not eating food prepared in labs elsewhere. I grew up fortunately with both grandparents who had victory gardens, do you yes, remember sure, those? Sure. Where we had a backyard plot and there's nothing better than eating food picked that day right out of your own garden. I agree. The flavor is, it's just, it doesn't compare. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having My us pleasure. today. You wanna I go to the restaurant? And we're on our way to this restaurant. I can't wait to taste some cheeses. Okay. Welcome back to the Dining Diva. I'm here with Ryan Kasten. Kasten, the chef here at Farm Girls Pub and Grub. And tell us about your background. Um, I, uh, I studied at Hawken College, uh, uh, Southern Ohio, uh, sort of in, a, in an area just like this, a lot of farmland, uh, a lot of local concepts. Um, moved back up to Cleveland and worked for, uh, for a couple bigger restaurants in the Cleveland area. Uh, and then met Abby, uh, which uh, was focused on uh, a farm-to-table concept, a local, sustainable uh, restaurant that gave back to the community. I know that's um, really important to you. Explain the concept is. from farm to table here. It's, uh, it's important to know where your food comes from, I think. Um, uh, it's nice to know that uh, the proteins, the vegetable, uh, the grains that you're eating were locally provided um, and you're able to then give back to the community. Um, it's what really keeps the, uh, the niche restaurants going. Um, so how do you order? How do you decide I've got... Ordering is, uh, ordering is pretty cool uh, with a farm to table concept. It's, um, uh, in the winter times, it gets a little bit scarce from what I can pick. Um, so we focus on proteins, we focus on 
pickled vegetables from, uh, from the previous uh, growing season. Um, when we get into uh, summer, uh, the full grow season, I actually go in and pick up what's readily available at the farm. Um, so they will pick so you're going directly to the farmer? Uh, directly to the farmer, yep. So we cut out the middleman. Um, we can uh, assure quality is there. Um, but I'll go and almost get a mystery basket every week, uh, which being a chef is, is very cool. Um, it, it lets you not be stagnant. Um, it lets you change your menu, change your almost image uh, as much as you want to. So I imagine then that you have a seasonal menu here at Farm Absolutely, Girls. yep. It changes uh, changes four times a year, um, if not more. If we run into something that we can play with a little bit better, then we'll uh, we'll make a special menu. What do we have today here? We have uh, some pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. Today we have, uh, yeah, this is a, a little showcase of, of uh, pickling during the winter. Um, so we have a... Uh, this is a method of preserving vegetables. Correct, right. Throughout so the winter. all of this was, uh, uh, was what we got in a mystery basket per se um, uh, over the summer. Um, so we have, uh, we have some farm uh, green beans. We've got a black and white radish that we pickled. Um, we have a Napa cabbage that's locally grown that's pickled. Uh, and then a purple pickled uh, pickle, actually. And these a are... twice pickled pickle. Uh, twice pickled pickle. There you go. Um, mm, delicious. On the back side, we have the the luxury of having our own cheese. Um, Abby Turner, the uh, the owner of this restaurant, makes her own cheese, uh, Lucky Penny Creamery. This cheese is addicting. It I, really I purchased is. up a couple of containers of it today. I couldn't stop eating it's it. Amazing. I was just digging out of the container. It right. was so and, good. And once a, once again, it goes back to um, to being fresh. Um, uh, there is a. Uh, a very big difference in a fresh goat cheese than there is to a packaged goat cheese. I don't think that you could ever, once you taste this, you could never go back to eating no, a packaged can't. cheese. Absolutely not. It takes all of the flavor out right. through that process. Right. Or when you're eating fresh cheese, I believe her husband told me this cheese had come out of the goat just a couple of days ago. Oh yeah, it's like five days turnaround. It, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's, re it's really cool. Uh, this is a, uh, this is just our regular chef, uh, our goat chef. This is our goat feta. Um, and feta is the crumbly cheese, yes, correct? Yes, feta is the crumbly. So you can um, use this over salads gum. and, right. again, I had talked earlier today, I would take a tortilla, sprinkle right, some absolutely. crumbled yeah. feta over, yeah, so melt same, it a little. Same starting point and then a different end point. Uh, you know, it gives us a little bit of variety. Um, the herbs that we have mixed into uh, this chev are from over the summer. Uh, so we have local lavender, uh, we have uh, local marjoram, um, local rosemary, over and time, um, you know, everything goes back to that full circle concept. We try to take everything from uh, 30 miles. Uh, we don't go, we don't like to go further than 30 miles from the restaurant. Um, that way it's, uh, it's approachable. You sort of, you can tell somebody that, uh, that your, your pig came from Medina, that your cow came from Atwater. Well, I'm so glad to have met you. Thank, thank you, you for welcoming My us here. I can't wait to try dinner this evening, Ryan. Thank well, you. We're excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Joining me now is Micah Collins Sibley. She is a server here at Farm Girls. And you're going to tell me about the the garden, the public garden. Mm -hmm. Give me a little bit of information about this. Well, it's not going to be a public garden. It'll be just for farm girls and supplying farm girls with fresh veg vegetables, herbs, things like that. We're hoping to, by doing this garden, we'll encourage the community to think more about how they themselves can start producing fresh organic food rather than relying on big supermarkets who tend to overcharge and things like that like that you yourself can get involved in an organic movement it's not something that you have to watch other people doing it's something you can do yourself at home you know i remember growing up my grandparents had victory gardens mm -hmm. and the backyard gardens where we would go pick fresh vegetables yeah. for dinner that night and there's nothing mm -hmm. better than a vegetable that you've just picked yeah. yourself the flavor is incredible mm -hmm. where are you going to grow the garden and how big do you intend it to be um, we have a lot behind the restaurant um, to start with we're just gonna have a, a 
six or so raised beds uh, and we're hopefully going to grow things like broccoli, tomatoes, um, fresh herbs, maybe start a lettuce bed mm -hmm. just so more of the ingredients that we're serving to people they we can take them outside and say this is where this is, this came from. Very nice. You can see where your food is coming from. Do you have a background in gardening? What do you know about gardening? <laughs> Actually, um, my parents. It seems intimidating. <laughs> it's not that intimidating. Um, Ever since I can remember, we've had a very large garden in the, my backyard. It's one of the reasons my parents bought the house that they bought is so there was enough land to do gardening. We've always had beans, peas, tomatoes, peppers. We even have a strawberry patch. Um, we had a lettuce bed, cauliflower, almost every vegetable you can imagine. We even tried corn one year, but we didn't quite have enough space to make it worth it. Corn, there's corn everywhere in Ohio. <laughs> there's seen so many cornfields. Yes, there are a lot of cornfields in Ohio. So what is your favorite thing to grow? What's the easiest thing for our viewers that are just starting out? Three things that should be in every home garden. Okay. Well, um, these some of these things you don't even need a full plot of land to do. Uh, for example, tomatoes. You can grow, grow tomatoes in a pot or you can get um, from any gardening supply store or hardware store, you can get equipment to do an upside down hanger so okay. the tomatoes grow down. And all you need is a good hot period during the summer. That, that That's when they'll flourish. They like hot and humid. Um, basil is also really easy to grow in your home. You don't have to have very much room. You can just have a pot of it. It grows like a weed. You don't need... Okay, so I can do that one. Yeah, you can do basil. <laughs> you pick it and it keeps growing all summer. And it's... the Fresh basil is one of the best things that you can put in anything. Just okay, chop it so up, put it in a salad. We have basil. We've got some Italian themes going on here. <laughs> What's our third ingredient uh, we should be? I think strawberries are really easy to grow. You just have to have, uh, you don't even have to have that big of a plot. You buy a couple strawberry plants, um, get some organic natural slug repellent, water them every so often, weed them every so often, and in the middle of August, you'll have this amazing crop of fresh strawberries. And they're completely unlike anything you get in a store. They're smaller, they're sweeter, they're they're amazing. Well, it was really nice talking to you today, Micah. Thank you for having us No problem, us here thank you for Argo. coming. It was lovely to meet you, thank you. It was you. great to meet you too. We're back with Josh Mobley. Um, you're the other chef here at Farm Girls Pub and Grab. And I just had the most amazing hamburger I've ever had Good. in my entire life. So please tell me a little bit about that hamburger you made for me. Well, our hamburger is locally grown, grass-fed beef. It's, there's none other like it. I can't even eat another hamburger anywhere else. I'll let you ruin me now for hamburgers. Well, I, I won't be able to back. enjoy them anywhere else. It really was the most flavorful, tender, juicy hamburger I've ever had. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. We take pride in everything that we do here. Absolutely. So do you develop the recipes, the menu? How does that work here? Uh, we have a set menu, which we will be adding more things to it as different vegetables and things come into season. And then I like to do different specials every weekend with seasonal things so it makes it very nice that I live right by the West Side Market nice. so we're able to pick up fresh produce from local growers and keep it local as possible. What's one of your favorite dishes to prepare? My one specials. Of your specialty. Yeah, what's your special? So what have you got going on this weekend? Oh this weekend we're doing vegetable fries which is a great mixture of uh, butternut squash and eggplant and very delicious. You have those winter vegetables that are available to you this time. Right. So we take advantage of it. Absolutely. And I, you've got some phenomenal desserts, I've heard as well. Yep. This evening we have our uh, fresh pear and uh, homemade goat cheese empanadas. Mm -hmm. Also a mixed berry empanada. Very good. I highly okay. suggest them. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm drooling though. <laughs> Okay, Josh, this looks amazing. Tell me what we've got here. Well, this is our uh, empanada special. It is pear and our fresh goat cheese. Mm. Also, the other one is a mixed berry compote, all fried to crispy goodness with a uh, delicious red wine and fruit sauce on top. Oh, it sounds amazing. So this must be the goat that cheese. That is the pear one. Yep. The pear and goat cheese. And... It's nice and crispy. Oh, it looks absolutely delicious. And... Our sauce here is... The that is a chocolate sauce, chocolate and this sauce. is the fruit uh, red wine sauce. Okay. 
Good stuff. Good. That's delicious, Josh. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely delicious. Thank Good. you. Abby, I've really enjoyed meeting you today Thanks. and learning all about this farm to table process. Mm -hmm. We're in the restaurant at 253 East Main. This is a beautiful historic property. Please tell me about the history here. Sure. Um, the Farm Girls Pub and Grub is located in um, historic downtown Alliance. And uh, as you mentioned, the address is 253 East Main Street. And this has been a restaurant for many, many years. There's so much history in this building. Um, it uh, was uh, a restaurant by the name of Jeanette's, which had a very fancy dance floor, and it's my understanding was the cat's meow in its day. Um, but it's been everything. It's been a Chinese restaurant. Um, it's been Anthony's Italian restaurant where they serve fantastic food for many, many years. So we're delighted to be able to carry the tradition on of offering just good, fresh food um, to downtown Alliance and surrounding communities. Um, because we are only open on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 to 9, um, it is a destination restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people coming from Cleveland, Akron. Um, we bring a lot of folks over from Canton because people will travel a great distance to experience food that they know is locally grown, um, antibiotic-free, uh, hormone-free, and that the animals graze outside daily. So, Describe your vision for our viewers. The farm to city vision that you have. Sure, we're we're very lucky and um, and challenged as well to actually be doing everything from pasture to plate. Mm -hmm. You know, we we raise the animals um, and care for them humanely while protecting the soil and the water. We then get the milk or the meat, the proteins from these animals, and um, we then process and package. And then we bring it to the plate. So it's pasture to plate, you know, where you can enjoy a beautiful grass-fed ground beef burger um, from uh, Mike Jones from Tierra Verde Farms. That burger only traveled 12 miles to and get here. And tasted amazing. You can't get anything else like that. Right. There's so much flavor. Right. We're trying to shorten the distance from pasture to plate. Um, the fact that the average carrot travels 1,700 miles um, to get to a plate is ridiculous. Which is losing vitamins, mm -hmm. it's losing flavor, and it's affecting our environment with the fuel costs and That's uh, correct. exhaust. Yep, and that carrot was r grown to be shipped. It's genetically designed to be shipped, not necessarily genetically designed to taste good. So um, in Ohio, we have fantastic carrots, and uh, we invite you to come down and have them. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll be here when you're ready to get the garden started. I'll Good. put my work gloves on. I'm ready to help you I'll break ground you there. That. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's Thank it. you so much, Abby. Well, I really delighted. enjoyed today. We're really, really happy to be able to move the urban farm movement ahead, move pasture to plate ahead, and do important economic development um, in an urban area while celebrating the gifts of the rural area so very nice please come out join abby turner at farm girls pub and grub in alliance this has been the dining diva and we'll see you next time